Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. Whoa, this is not my life. This is too cool for me. I'm going to Barcelona. Not only does this city never sleep, it really knows how to eat. It's a search for the best tapas. That's one of the most delicious things I ever ate in my life. And one of nature's greatest gifts, jamón. They don't even see that I'm eating half of it as I go. All the best this wonderful, one-of-a-kind city has to offer. <gasps> Next on... There were things I never tasted growing up, like food with any flavor. In our house, meat was a punishment. When I went into the real world, I was like a man coming out of the desert. Then I started writing comedy and traveling to other lands to eat. The world can be a beautiful, delicious, and friendly place when we travel and eat great food together. I'm Phil Rosenthal, and I'm here to see and eat most of it and to say to you, come on. You can have what I'm having. When we travel, we want it to be a special experience. And, and for me, I, I want to find the best of what that city has to offer. And that includes the thing that maybe they're most famous for. Here's what I love about Barcelona. This might be the most walkable and bike rideable place on Earth. It's an incredible mix of great art and architecture spread out across a collection of beautiful neighborhoods. It's kind of an in-between Paris and Florence. Plus, it's got the Mediterranean beach, a warm and lovely climate, and beautiful people who love to eat. Then you have the food. The food is so explosively delicious. So why wouldn't I want to find the best tapas, the best jamón? They start at 8 o'clock at night, and they go from bar to bar eating these tapas. And they'll have three or four small plates, and then they go to the next bar. Oh, we got to try the small plates here. So they try those small plates until they're full, which is around midnight, and then dinner. They seem to love life. This is going to be a little difficult for me, because usually I'm in bed by 9. Tonight, my first night here just happens to be the Feast of San Juan, and I'm invited to a party that starts at 10 o'clock. This night is second only to New Year's Eve here in terms of revelry. Sounds like fun, yes? For everybody, except for me. I'm not really a party guy. And I, I don't know anyone here, so I'm a little nervous. So I think this is it. Top floor, but I don't know how many floors here. Our hosts are Andrea and his wife Mercey. Both are architects. Mercey has designed over a dozen restaurants. How are you doing? Yes, I'm Emil. One of their friends is Emil Samper. He's a guy who used to be in marketing and advertising, but gave it up to become a chef. He was so good that he became a finalist on Master Chef Spain. I brought you some kava. Oh. It was cold when I started up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> All of this is very typical. A little pepper, gin, and some onion. Okay. Everything is done on the fire. Uh, the best way is just... Put on bread? Yeah. <laughs> you can mix it. And then it should be on the top. Feliz San Juan. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. You see, this is the beginning of the summer. So what we like to do is a uh, big fires, just to burn out the old things yes. and give some room for the new things. This is a celebration of the solstice. Longest day of the year. Yeah. The longest day of the year. Because now exactly. it's, it's almost 10 o'clock and it's not dark yet. Yeah. And you're going to, what are you burning? <laughs> Anything. <laughs> <laughs> Clothing? <laughs> Looks like Andre is burning a few other things, too, like butifara, which is a kind of sausage, and lomo alto, which is this big, beautiful hunk of beef. You see, when I was a kid, the bonfires was amazing, because everybody take the furniture from house. Sofa, bed, yes. chairs. Yes, the real one. Television. Yes. <laughs> and, they, and they throw it through the window. Yes. And the kids pick it up and put it in a big, big bonfire, like 
15 meters or bigger. I promise you, I saw this with my eyes. In the middle of the city? In the middle of the city, in the street, on the squares, whatever, you see? It was amazing. Now, I'm never going to be the guy who says anything against pork, but I've only been here 12 hours, and I've had pork hamon, pork sausages, butifara. Pork is in everything. You're almost happy to see dessert come around. Yes. This has pork in it. Yeah. A cake with pork in it. Yeah. You people are pork crazy. <laughs> no, no. Everything is pork. No. <laughs> Even the dessert has pork. Hamon? Yes, that's yeah, pork. What do you have against the pig? <laughs> What's that one? The light one. The light one. With There's the fruit, no pork, no pork. I don't want it. No pork. We call it with yardons. That it means yar is fat. Only the fat of the pork. The fat of the pork. <laughs> I was worried I was eating too healthy. <laughs> in America, they put pork in desserts they make it with bacon, crispy bacon. With chocolate. With, with chocolate. <laughs> you know it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You knew this? Yes, I knew. You never heard of this? Yeah. Oh, oh that's yeah. disgusting. Yeah. disgusting yeah. Yes, yeah. it's very disgusting as you eat a cake <laughs> with yeah, pork. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Very that's disgusting. Right. We believe in pork. Believe in pork. <laughs> That's we a good in pork. That's a good religion. In our t-shirt, we believe in pork. <laughs> the fireworks are beautiful. And then I learned they're not sanctioned by the city. These are maniacs shooting them off from their own rooftops. I think back home you you call the police or, or somebody. I here I think the police are hey, 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 helping. <laughs> Right there. Daddy? Right there. Hey! What is that? I was almost killed. Look at this. It almost hits me in the head. The only thing we can do is retaliate. Here I am, bravely returning fire. This is everything my parents told me never to do. Congratulations, we've started a war. Oh, good. That's so good. Oh, my God. Can I kiss you? You could have the time of your life at the party, but you won't know unless you go to the party. Go to the party. Ole! Wow! To St. John! Come on, to St. John! John. Felicidad, John! And now this morning, my head hurts. Why did I go to the party? Luckily, I recovered just in time for breakfast. One of my favorite things to do when I travel is to visit the markets, and this may be the best one I've ever been to. This is Barcelona's Boqueria. It originated as an open-air market in 1217. It's the most amazingly beautiful market you've ever seen. The fruit, the fish, the meats on display. It's as if you were in an art-directed movie of the greatest foods on earth. So I thought that everything just comes in the Boqueria and they set it up. But what I learned is every stand has their own little storage place underneath their stand. And I just saw it. Joining me this fine morning is Chef Pablo Alberne, who has two restaurants in the city. I love being with Pablo because food maniacs attract. Yes, I love it. Things for all around the wall over yeah. there. I see the lamb's head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He looks at me. If it if it falls in the right hands, it could be delicious. They eat everything. The eggs, the the the, the brain, the the eyes, everything. <laughs> it's like yeah. a horror movie. Yeah, you have to be open. I'm Maybe open. you try. I love to eat. Everything. Now, that said, I'm not crazy. I'm not eating bugs, thank you. 
I'm not eating the la eyeball of the lamb. But, you know, certain cultures value these animal parts and fluids as life-giving and strength-giving and wonderful. And I'm sorry, but I'm not doing that. Wow. We're in the fish section now. There is no smell. It just smells fresh and clean, like the ocean. These things are either still alive or freshly dead. Look at that. That's the natural color. That's not cooked. That's from here. Yeah. That's from Argentina, and that's for Ecuador. One of the things I'm doing on this trip is I'm trying to find the best hamel. You know, the secret of the ham is the fat. Look at, look at, look at that. Come it looks like it was fake. <laughs> mm. Oh, muchas gracias. Oh. Ah. The greatest thing about the Boqueria is that you can sit at any one of a number of counters and have an incredible world-class meal without paying for a white table club. You can mix here eggs with everything. OK, then, what are you going to have? Eggs with something. I, I, I you love need to it. be more specific. I, I, I... Pablo's not kidding. You can get eggs with anything. Mushrooms, squid, octopus. You can even get foie gras. Yes, foie gras. Bien. Mira, King, te presento a Phil. Hello. Hola. Mira, Estados Unidos. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm Kim. You're Kim. This yes. is you. Now, Kim has been at the Boqueria for 26 years. What started as a nine-foot counter with five stools has grown into this to accommodate this hungry mob. Kim invites me back to the kitchen because maybe he doesn't care about his business. Can I help in some way? I can make the people pay. I have ways. <laughs> I know I said kitchen, but this is really a human pinball machine where one of the bumpers is 800 degrees. I think I lost my eyebrows. This guy's so passionate about food, he's tattooed his favorite ingredients on his arm. I figure you should order eggs from a man who has an egg on him. Yeah. <laughs> wow. This is high-class eating, and you're at a stand in an open farmer's market. His canvas is a tiny box where he works with his son and three other guys. How they don't kill each other is beyond me. If it was my family all locked in a box like that, we wouldn't last five minutes. You're the boss. Vale? Chopped garlic? I'm not good. I was hoping for an accounting job. I'm not, I could never work here. You would fire me in one minute. Okay, look at this. This is what near boiling olive oil does to an egg. You have to be careful, because if the oil gets too hot, it starts to smoke like crazy. Finished? But if done right, the rewards are extra crispy, flavorful whites and perfect yolks. Maybe the best fried eggs ever? Wow. Nice. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not making your food. The fried eggs with baby squid. Oh! Look at that. For me, it's better everything mixed. Don't worry, okay. we miss it to no lo, lo <laughs> This is something I never had. Mm. Why wouldn't you have this every day? Mm. The secret yeah. is the freshness of the product. Yeah. And not to touch it a lot. Yeah. This is world-class food done with great enthusiasm by, I think, a master. They obviously love what they're doing, and it spreads this kind of goodwill to everyone who sits at that counter. And you can't help but talk to the people next to you because they're all in great moods. All right, let me give it to my friend. Here's something you never had. Oh, yeah. This is unbelievable. It's fantastic. It's spicy. Can you handle spicy? Food is the greatest way to make friends. Yeah. Sure. If you give somebody a taste of something fantastic. See? And we'll see what kind of friends they are. Yeah. Right? We're talking about friends. And yeah, now we'll see. Uh, right. <laughs> this is the <laughs> test. <laughs> the prom, prom test. What do you think? Amazing, right? Yeah. That was great. Yeah. But I love. But I. But I think it, 
people are afraid of a kind of a fishy taste, but it's not, right? It's fantastic. It's really fantastic. Would you like a giant prawn? They're good friends. I know. We got it. Send it this way. Are you ready? Well, keep one. And then I'll send it your way. Wow. No, 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 no. No, no just give us one. We're fine. No, 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 no. All right. Take one. That's good. No, you you guys, you got a, you got a lot of sightseeing to do. You yeah. need your stamina, you need your vitamins, your energy. Look at the size. <sighs> That's for you, my friend. Best part. Really? Yeah. I'm already stuffed today, but Pablo insists that we cannot leave until I try the specialty of the house. Look at this. A neatly plated cup of sautéed mushrooms topped with that olive oil fried egg, foie gras, and then a little caramelization. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Look at that. Oh, no. Look at that. Uh, I'm going to hell. But it's a happy road to hell. Oh my god. You should only have this for breakfast on Father's Day, yeah. and only if you have five or more children. <laughs> this is the world's best breakfast, I'm, I'm declaring it. I'm, I'm, I'm different. Yeah. Eggs, but in a different way. In a different way, but listen, you would never, most people would never order octopus and eggs. Yeah. Right? I'm here to tell you, order octopus and eggs. You guys are geniuses. Time for some art. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you the only thing you should do in Barcelona is eat. It's not good for the soul to just eat. You have to see the other things. Luckily, Barcelona has some of the most beautiful architecture in the world. One of the wildest, weirdest, most creative architects who ever lived was named Anthony Gaudi. And Barcelona has 10 of his buildings, plus an entire park that was designed by him. Maybe you're familiar with his Sagrada Familia, which they started building in 1882 and is still not finished. But when it is, it will be the tallest church in the world. Today, we're gonna to take a look at another really cool building called La Pedrera. It was designed for the Mila family and they lived there for a while. And then they opened up the building to other tenants. It's still a functioning apartment building 100 years later. Whoa. I know I ate a lot, but this seems unnecessary. Thank you. The open design features the styles of Catalan modernism, which grew to prominence around the time of its construction. Gaudí was involved with every aspect of the design of his buildings. This whole place feels like it was formed naturally out of the earth, but I've been told some of the most interesting design aspects are on the roof. And then you start to realize where a lot of Star Wars came from. It's pretty incredible to see on a building that was built today, but then when you factor in that it was built 100 years ago, it's kind of mind-blowing. The neighbors must have complained. Not only are you seeing the work of Gaudí, but you're seeing the whole city from up here. One, two, three. Very pretty. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. Where are you from? California. Me too. All right, where? Yeah, Los Angeles. Uh, San Jose. Nice. This is, as I understand it, an apartment building. People yeah. are living here. Yeah. Can you imagine? And then he thought to put this stuff on the roof. <laughs> well, know. the point was is that these are all like vents and stuff. So yeah. he ornamented everything. Yes. That's amazing. Did I you work. study art in school or? No, it's more of a hobby. Yeah. I'm a tech writer. Yeah. yeah? Retired, just retired. Oh, yeah? <laughs> so now you're living the dream. Yeah. I had to see it before I died. Yeah. Yeah, it's worth saving up for to see stuff like this. And... It's a lot better than having a BMW. That's right. <laughs> I mean, sorry, BMW, but that's... Uh, <laughs> but you're right. I've just added to that nice couple's memories. Remember that weird guy on the roof? So now it's tapas time. This is one of the main missions for me, is to find the best tapas in Barcelona. 
And my new friend Emil is taking me to one of his favorite places, Sukulent in the Raval. This was once a fairly dangerous neighborhood, but it's been transformed over the years into a mecca of art, culture, and food. The Brooklyn of Barcelona. Okay, first, his recommendation. Whatever you bring, I will eat. Perfecto. Ostras, os apetece una ostra con manzanilla. I'm starting to understand things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I think. Okay. All right, I don't want to hear. Go ahead. <laughs> You see, the tapa is coming from, I mean, there are a lot of theories, but once, when we don't have refrigerators, yes. you ask for a wine, there are a lot of flies, and you see? Yeah, so you're you going back hundreds to, of years. Yeah, hundreds, hundreds of years. Of years yes. So you need something to cover. Tapa means lid. Top. Yes, the top. Top. So they would they put, put a plate. No, they put a little bread ah. with something. So bugs don't get in your wine. That's it. OK. But don't they get on the food then? The fly is gonna be there anyway. So you prefer to have it just fly? On your food or in your drink? In your drink. Huh? That means the drink is more important than the food. Could be, yeah. Not to my people. So you see, tapas have come a long way from just protecting beverages. In fact, many of the great chefs here compete for tapas awards. I'm going for the eating one. Oh! Here it comes. Wow, what's that? Very nice. This is the gypsy arm. That's the arm of a gypsy. Yeah, the arm of the gypsy. I think you could make a better name tuna. for that. Oh, tuna? Cannelloni of potato. Inside we have tuna, but the ventresca. The best. That's it. And the mayonnaise is olive one. This is really delicious. I'm just sorry someone had to lose their arm. Mm. So it's, it's like a gazpacho, because mm -hmm. it's tomato-based, it's cold. Mm -hmm. But they put the jamón, the mm -hmm. almonds, yes. and some other seasoning, the bonito flakes. That's it. Very original. And they put some bread. To thicken it. To thicken it. You had me add jamón. <laughs> Succulent offers an oyster harvested from the Barcelona area in the north, but then they replace the seawater with sauce that's infused with manzanilla wine from the south, and then they top it with olive juice. It's a work of art. It's like a beautiful oyster latte. My tongue is from the north, and my stomach is from the south. <laughs> mm. When something works, it just works. You feel it instantly that that's a great combination of flavor. Even now, I'm still tasting the brininess of yes. it. Yes. Very that good. is a great dish. Can we have uno mas? Si. Sí. Si, sí. <laughs> my favorite word. <laughs> I could sit and eat here all day, but Emil says, nope, there's another place we have to get to. Why stop when you're full? This is Bar Cañete, and not only is it also one of the best tapas bars in Barcelona, it was designed by our beautiful host from the San Juan Festival, Merced. Hola, Merced. Hey, hi. Nice to see How you. Are you. How are you? Fine. You designed this place. Yeah. You did a beautiful job. I love the line of this bar. Yeah. It looks okay. great. I love the cases where you see all the food. Salud. Salud. This is aubergine with onion and anchovy with lime, and some tomato. This place won the first place in the tapas in Barcelona this year. Congratulations. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. It's always a little intimidating when you hear this one first place. So if you don't like it, there's something wrong with you. Mmm. <laughs> If you wanted to, could you live in any other part of Spain, if you wanted? Well, I was living eight years in Madrid. In Madrid, yes. Yes. And I really miss the sea. Yeah. And the, this is a really good city to hide. Be to hide? In. Yeah. OK, so this prompts the question, what are you hiding from? Well, from public life, from the war, from the exposition. We always say, like, people from, from Barcelona, maybe when, you, when they go to a restaurant, yeah. they will be in that corner there. And in Madrid, they will be in the, in, front. The in the front, so that people can see that they are there. Bar Cañete has great seafood tapas. This mullet is fresh from the Mediterranean, and it's laid on a bed of ratatouille. Looks nice, hmm? I love the color of the skin. Yeah, and it smells better. Yeah. So beautiful. I love this fish. Mm. 
it tastes like it was swimming one minute ago, right? Really nice. So fresh. Yeah. And we also get a plate of fried shrimp, octopus, and moray eel. Do you take many pictures of your food like me? I'll try to picture up everything that I eat, everything. Me too. I have three pictures of my children and 50,000 pictures of food. <laughs> So then this is garlic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the way, cañete or cañí is also a kind of garlic. Oh, uh, yeah? Oh, they batter it and then they fry it. That's it. And it's fry it in a high temperature. Beautiful. Just for a quick... Not oily at all. No. Perfect. You gotta love garlic. <laughs> This is what a typical day of travel is like for me. I walk and walk and walk and walk until I find lunch, and then after lunch I walk and walk and walk and walk until I find dinner. But tonight is something else. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my god. This is Dos Cielos, our big splurge here in Barcelona. This is not my life. This is too cool for me. My expert on the ground here in Barcelona, Lucy Garcia, insists that I meet Sergio and Javier Torres, who own and run Dos Cielos. And I insist I eat their food. Y luego porque nuestra abuela nos decía que éramos Dos Cielos. Ah. <laughs> this is a play on words. Um, in, in Spanish, when we say Cielo, yes. it's like saying, darling, sweetie, their grandmother yes. always said that they were dos cielos, oh, like two sweeties. That's so nice. Yeah. My parents called my brother and me two mistakes. This place is very high end, very creative, very fancy, and quite frankly, I don't always know what the hell I'm eating. So this is when you go to get communion. Communion. Yeah. Yes. The same bread. So this will be new for me. Yeah. If you, you want, <laughs> should you place it, it on my tongue? Deal. It's delicious. Call the Vatican and say we have a new idea for you. Ah yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> More people will come. That's just they come just for the wafers. <laughs> Flower pot. <laughs> oh, look how beautiful. This is like a play on tomato preserve. Mm. It's a real tomato. Mm -hmm. With the skin off. It's very soft. Delicious. What is the soil? I don't know. It's like Oreo crumbs, but not sweet. A little bit. And then they come back and they say, oh, that's a dirt. Why are you You're eating, eating the dirt? dirt. <laughs> Best dirt I ever had. Good, good dirt. Yeah. This is their take on a typical Spanish dish, which is white asparagus and ham. Pero los espárragos son de nuestro huerto. So these asparagus are from their garden. All oh, right. Yes. Yes. This is yeah. special. It's delicious. This may be the winner so far. Oh, beautiful. This is grouper. I love how it's a little rare in the center, like great sushi. It's cooked perfectly. You taste that rosemary through the fish. Yeah. What a great idea. You want to have sauce. You know what you're doing right there? What my family calls zabaling. Zabaling? Zabaling. Zabaling Where you is take a thing? A, it's a thing. You take your bread and you soak up whatever's left. And when you spill on yourself and you, you get your shirt dirty, they, they call that for schmuttering. For schmuttering. For schmuttering. Yeah. Look, you're all for schmuttered here. <laughs> what did you do? What are you eating? A barn? What? Your mother You're must have been a very interesting character. Yeah, they're both. Well, I owe them everything. They gave me so much material for my TV show just by being who they are. I make fun of them for a living, but I owe everything to them as well. But you love them. Yeah. yeah. Good. Here's Cheers. To Here's to your parents. Do they appreciate fine dining? 
My parents don't care. I about don't this think stuff. they would. Yeah, except when I do it, like they'll fight the whole way. I don't me need too, such a too. thing. The I don't same, need yeah. a meal yeah. like this. I don't need why so much bread. I don't need why stop Public already. How much bread can one person eat? What are you doing? I don't want it. It has things in it. Why can't I just have plain, don't normal have bread? Plain, normal. Taste it. Taste it. Just all right. Head. All right. Oh, that's very good. Oh, that's very good. It was saying, let me eat the whole thing. <laughs> Does it go to full screen automatically? It will. I yes. hope it will. Hi, Philip. Hi. You're How are good. you? Very good. Where's you look husband? good. Where's so your husband? How are you? Oh, hi, Dad. <laughs> How is work? Everything good? Very good. Ma, are you talking to someone better than me on the phone? No, what I'm doing is holding on for Verizon. Why? They want to can cancel. I want to cancel the phone. Who wants to cancel the phone? Me. I'm good. I just lost my iPhone. Oh, because you lost your phone. Again? Yes. So now you're holding with Verizon. They have 10 minutes. I have to wait. You'll be there all night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tell me, what's going on? I'm eating a lot. I'm seeing a lot. I'm seeing a lot of your chest right now. <laughs> Co cover up. What else? Is have a little one? dignity. How, is, how are things going? You want to hear what I've been eating? Not really. Go ahead. <laughs> Dad, move over a little bit so Mom can get on there. Do you, you've been here to, to uh, Barcelona? Barcelona, yeah. I've been to Spain many times. This is where I got mugged. What happened? In the subway. He wasn't mugged. They took his wallet, then they came back, gave him back the wallet. Yes. We went down to the... And they, and they took the money. They took the money, but nothing else. That's the and nicest mugging I ever heard. So you, you lost some money, but would you say that that ruined the vacation for you? No. Because no. why? Because you saw all like these great he things. He blamed me for wanting to take the subway because I wanted to take the subway. Oh, you got the blame for the for the pickpocket because you went in the subway. I the blame for everything. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Are <laughs> 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 this on PBS? Are you? They wouldn't show crap like this. No. They only show smart things. <laughs> all right, I go now. Take care. Love to everybody. Right, stay, stay well. Good. All right, bye. 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 Take care. Okay. The best word for Barcelona is seductive. And it's hitting me in all the senses. In the mid-1980s, two brothers named Ferran and Albert Adria took a small restaurant on the Costa Brava about two hours north of Barcelona and transformed it into what was widely considered to be the best restaurant in the world, El Bulli. Some called it the birthplace of molecular gastronomy, which is a fancy term for an artistic, expressive, avant-garde way of cooking. From 1987 till it closed in 2011, El Bouilly was also the toughest reservation anywhere on Earth, with over 600,000 requests for 6,000 seats a season. Now, I was lucky enough to actually eat there about six years ago, and I'm never going to forget it. Tonight, I'm thrilled to eat some of the same dishes that live on in the brothers' new casual places here in Barcelona. Tickets and this place, Bodega 1900, a vermouth yeah. bar. I'm so excited to meet the man who Ferran Adria called the best chef he knows, his brother Albert Adria. Phil, hey. Hey. Hola. 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 Great Hola. pleasure. Hola. Great pleasure. Welcome to Bodega. I'm excited. Oh, listen, yeah. It's Are you ready to Vermont? Yeah. Perfect. Why is Vermouth so popular now in Barcelona? Well, I think when you I drink, taste it and then I'll know. Taste. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Chin chin. Chin chin. <laughs> It's delicious. <laughs> yeah. Now, I've never had the vermouth experience, so my guide here at Bodega 1900 is rock critic turned food writer, Xavi Agulo, who's been close friends with Albert and Ferran Adria for decades. 
<laughs> okay. Oh, chips. Olives making hum. Wow. Oh. This anchovies in two styles. Oh, beautiful. Fresh anchovies. Yeah. And salt anchovy. Oh, I love it. This is the traditional Catalonian vermouth. So the whole experience is called vermouth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know. Exactly. But this is gold. This is gold. Gold. Hundreds of years ago, what's called fur vermouth didn't just refer to having a drink before dinner, but all the snacks that went along with it. Kind of a happy hour. In my house, this would have been seltzer and some yelling. Now, these are the famous spherical olives from El Bui, right? Mm -hmm. They look like olives, but it's actually all liquid held together with a very thin skin. Exactly. And then the olive explodes. In the mouth. And it's more olive than olives. That changed the world, that dish. It's one of the recipes that changed the world. Yeah. Exactly. This became the signature dish of molecular gastronomy and put this whole style of cooking on the map. It's important that Bermuda is only open the palate. Please come with me to tickets. We need to eat. I'll follow you anyway. Where are you going? Okay. Please. He takes us across the street to one of his other places, which just happens to be the hottest restaurant in Barcelona, if not all of Spain. The final stop on our search for the best tapas. Now we eat. Everybody thought that uh, when Ferran and Albert uh, uh, will open yes. the first restaurant uh, in Barcelona, yes. it will be, you know, a very designed yes. restaurant, very good architect, yes. you know, uh, wow. Yes. No, Ferran says one thing, I don't want design. I want fun. Everything we do is in an effort to capture something from childhood the innocent feeling of joy, of yes. fun, yes. right? Yes. It's in everything we try to do. Yes. We don't even realize it in the day, but we're searching for this. Yes. And here they've achieved it in, in cooking yeah. and, and yeah. in the presentation of the cooking. Yeah. Everything yeah. has a sense of fun about it, but beyond that, it's also delicious. It has to be, or, or we wouldn't talk about it. The idea to this place is a uh, uh, social diet, the high gastronomy. Before always is in the ambience and high uh, level, no? Uh, yes. But this part is, uh, is originally from El Bulli. Yes. That is a watermelon with a sangria. Wow. It's a uh, uh, vacuum. Yeah. And this is a peanut with a, a, small, a small quantity of honey. Please enjoy. Thank you so oh, much. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. <laughs> It's already magical, right? <laughs> Here you have an invisible lid <laughs> yes, holding yes. up the peanut. Yeah, it's an impossible tapa. Crushed very fine and then formed together in a shape of a peanut. Yeah. This is a mozzarella making home yeah. with a tomatoes dehydrated in the oven. It's theater, but the best kind of theater. It's theater you yeah. can eat. <laughs> most high expression of things. That's the highest the tomato can go. The, the, this tomato, it's more tomato than tomatoes. It's like when you see the beautiful Impressionist paintings and you see Renoir's uh, peaches. Mm -hmm. It looks more peach than a peach. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. As we finish a dish, another one comes out, brought to us by maybe the world's most overqualified waiter. Look at this. You're getting this beautifully cured beef the world's best breadstick. Okay. That is uh, caviar of oil, uh, hazelnut. And inside is a mousse of cheese. For sure. Mm. Oh. Look. Okay, oh, this is beautiful. a wrap with uh, avocado and sour cream. <laughs> Please enjoy. Thank you. So it's... He comes, it's like a, a magician. He comes, he goes <laughs> poof like this, and then he leaves. <laughs> I'm gonna do something unprofessional now. <laughs> okay, my Bravo. brother. That's my brother. Bravo. Who loves you? Who loves you, Richard? Yes, I'm a good brother. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I took a lot to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At El Bulli, 
You had to ask for a reservation when two million people were asking for a reservation. It was a special occasion to eat there. Yeah. Okay. This is open to the public in Barcelona. This, yes. you, anyone can get a reservation yes. and come and yes. eat here. Yes. All right, I'm calling it. This is it. Game over. No more calls. We have a winner. Ticket is the best tapas in Barcelona, if not all of Spain, if not the world, right down to our last sip of our peach-infused lemon verbena sangria. Good night. Oh, it's a drink and a dessert. <laughs> Muchas gracias. It's Renoir's peach. It's more peach than peach. <laughs> Cheers. Wow. Thank you. Go around again. Oh, Don't forget to kiss the chef. <laughs> I, I would kiss this chef on the mouth. I He's always fantastic. kiss the chef. Wow. That was a good night. So this morning, I just need a little coffee. If you were walking down Las Ramblas, the main drag in Barcelona, where all the tourists are, you could get the most expensive and probably worst cup of coffee right there. But if you walked in a block, you'd probably do a little better. And if you went just a little further, down the alley you usually wouldn't go down, you might not only find where all the locals go, but Albert Adria's favorite breakfast place in town, Grania Viader and it's only been here about 125 years. I love talking to Albert. And today, he brought along his friend Paco, who's not only his business partner, but the chef in their new Mexican restaurant. I heard that this is the best hot chocolate in yeah. Barcelona. Is yeah. that true? This is the darkest hot chocolate I've ever seen. <laughs> it's chocolate pudding. <laughs> I mean, look how thick that is. Look at that. I think you're supposed to do this. Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm only dunking this churro because I can't fit my whole head in there. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on. Come on. I like it's not too much sweet. That's the secret, isn't it? I mean, you're a great pastry chef. I think all the great pastry chefs know that the secret is not too sweet, not right? Too sweet, not too sweet. Here is famous too, a sandwich calling bikini. Bikini sandwich. Yeah. I like the sound of it. It just looks like ham and cheese. It's cheese and ham. Yeah. What kind of cheese? Creamy cheese. <laughs> the name the bikini, it's from the cut, the bread, the bikini. I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If the girls at the beach were wearing this, it'd be even sexier. <laughs> You're from Barcelona originally, yeah. and so that's why you chose Barcelona to make all your restaurants? We have a good weather. The city is smaller, the people like it, yeah. the sea. And uh, the food is very important when you're a tourist. For me, the most important thing. <laughs> but for me but, too. <laughs> and for, and for a lot of people. But it's people. more than just food. It's the social life. It's the entertainment of the night. It's the vacation for the people who live here as well, not just for me. Your place is a vacation for everybody. By the end of this year, in this neighborhood of El Parallel, Albert will have five restaurants, what he calls a culinary amusement park. Gracias, eh? We should all be as excited as he is to walk down a street in the neighborhood we live in. <laughs> it was like going down the street with the Pope. It's, it's very funny, but do you remember the olives? The spherical olives. The spherical. Okay. Yes, OK. Well, this technical born here. But this is a, like a paint shop. For make this, you need only two things. One is algae. Yes. And another is calcium. Well, I don't know where, where I can uh, calcium. People tell me when well, in, uh, in that, in drogeria in drugstore, and okay. come here to buy a calcium. So the iconic dish of El Bui, born here. Yeah, and the spherical born. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is amazing where invention comes from. You know, for Albert, it was this drugstore. And for me, it's, you know, I get an idea in the shower or while my wife is talking to me. And now we get to see what will become Albert's grandest project. Please, please. 
This will be Enigma. I'm here to make a reservation. This is uh, some uh, photos we have for the aesthetical. Wow. This is our reserve for 10 people inside. There are people, 24 people eating only here with yes. a very big table. Yeah. My idea is make one of the best restaurants in the world in this place. Most chefs who say, and here I'm going to make hopefully the best restaurant in the world, you would say, OK, pal. But he's already done it. <laughs> I feel very lucky to have the tour. I thought I was done. And then he goes, oh, one more place you should see that's mine. Uh, just have a look. This is Pakta, which is Albert's Peruvian Japanese restaurant. It's potato with mayonnaise from uh, Peru. But he wanted me to try something and saw my reaction, and he wanted me to try something else. And he said, here, try something else. Está bien? Ah. Oh. And this is a probably from China with kimchi. We're working in the- I have the, to the, stop. The, well, is it I have to stop one second. OK. That's one of the most delicious things I ever ate in my life. That was because there was this kimchi crunch underneath the pork belly thing. I could eat 10 of these. <laughs> I don't remember what is that. I'm I sorry. don't care what it is. I'm going to eat it. This is kind of a microcosm of traveling. You could turn a corner and find a place that's unexpected and taste it and love it. And this place that you thought you were going to spend an hour in, You've changed your vacation, and now you're going to live here. Would you like to taste something more? No, we don't. The man says he wants to make me something. I know we have to go. You guys can go. This can happen. This is why you travel. Oh, hello. <laughs> One more for finish. I can't say no to you. I'm in love. Mm. It's my last day in Barcelona, and there's one place I must get to. Plus, I think it's been 15 minutes since I've had any pork. Many of the great things in life don't always have such nice beginnings. Let's take the obsession with jamón in Spain. Do you know where it comes from? The Spanish Inquisition. That was fun. You know that one of the main tests to determine whether you were Christian enough was the question, how about some bacon? And if you didn't say, oh, I'd love some, you might not like what happened next. Now, I've had some great jamón here maybe enough to convert me. But I've found what may be the grand temple of Iberico ham, Via Vinoteca, which sells the best of the best, with legs going for hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars. Hola. Hey, hello, Phil. Maxime. How are you? Very good. Great to meet you. This is where ham lives. Please come through. All right. Oh, I'm in Hamon heaven. <laughs> and it's all bellota, which means they, they eat the acorns from the oak. So why acorns? Did they try peanuts? Did they try hazelnuts? Pigs, they love acorns and truffle. So that's why you, you might find a little taste of truffle, a little taste flowery. What you get out of it depends what you put into it. Exactly. And then it's aged like, like great beef or something, right? right? Many people think it's smoked, but it's not smoked, it's cured. Yeah. This one. Hello. But you can see it's Iberic ham because it has a very, very thin leg. Right. And he has the pata negra, yes. which is the, the black, black nails. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. I think we have to have a tasting. Exactly. I think we have to <laughs> taste everything, and I think I have to move in here for a couple of weeks. So right now he's, he's trimming to get to the good stuff. Exactly. Right? There's but I would probably eat the bad stuff. I would be fine with that. <laughs> yeah. I like your gloves, too. You're like Prince. <laughs> yeah. The, the Prince of Ham. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, yes. uh -huh. It's very important to, to have uh, Iberic ham, very well sliced and very 
always on the same um, uh, same size. I'm sorry, I didn't hear anything you said. <laughs> I just went away for a minute. <laughs> Star Trek? Yeah, Star Trek, yes, very good. Look at the oil on my fingers, just from touching that for two seconds. Almost all the fatness and the, and the oil, Yes. it's over here. Like by the ankle. Exactly. This way, the fatness and the oils go down slowly ah, and it drains ah. all the, all the beads. I thought it just looked good hanging that way. It's almost like a massage. It's a little naughty. Now, if I told you this was also actually good for you, would you believe it? That this has the healthy fat, that HDL instead of the LDL? So I think you gotta eat a lot of this. <laughs> You're my favorite person. Oxen? Yes. I almost grabbed that, by the way. <laughs> How long did you train to be the slicer? Un año. Many people ask him to learn about how to slice, but it's very, he said it's very, very difficult to, to teach because you have to practice a lot. Uh, but today we will make an exception and, and it'll show you how to... That, Come on. He said, no, no. He said, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Look at this. So you're Prince and I'm Michael Jackson. Arthur King. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're almost like a knight. We can go on the tour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He should have me do the least expensive part of the leg <laughs> with this hand. Okay. More movement. No, no, no. Hand. This. Okay. Or she's escape. Up. Up. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. So don't don't dig so much. Exactly. Right? All right. I'm gonna get this one nice. So how hard could this be, right? I mean, you're just slicing a uniform slice of meat, but it's very hard because there's harder meat next to softer meat, next to softer fat. They're all right next to each other. So as your blade is coming down, you have to lean like microseconds of an inch of pressure on the top of your blade, but the back of your blade has to rise up. Otherwise, you're going to make a mess of it. Oh, this is no good. You'll, I'll have to eat this one. No es importante tener una, una luncha súper larga. No, hay gente que le gusta la Generoso de dejarle estropear tú. Ese temblante. They don't even see that I'm sí, eating half of it as I go. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. That's okay? okay. Yeah. Really? You're doing a great job. Okay. I can work here. Yo creo que ha venido a quitarme el trabajo. He thinks that you, you came to take his job. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take your job. No, I'll take your pig. <laughs> it's, this is a very smart thing to have, the chainmail glove. I, I should have been wearing a suit of armor. <laughs> All right, who wants some pig? You want a piece? I cut it myself. Did you? Yeah. There's some guests. Special today. <laughs> Thank you. Two we take. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, Beno? Yeah? yeah? It's nice to meet you. You want another piece? Well, yes. Okay. How about how about these guys? Hola. You like ham? You do? Ma yeah, ma Maldonado. You like it? Maldonado. Yeah. Excellent. Where are you from? From here. Oh, yeah. From here. Oh, from yeah. Barcelona. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like I like your city. Hey, it's good. It's good. Very good. Very nice people. You know. I like everybody I meet so far. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. We You're a gentleman. Very pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Thank you very much. Okay. And we have now a Tio Pepe. Okay. I'll have what you're having. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for everything. Okay. And so we say adios to Barcelona. I am very lucky to get to come and spend time in a place like this and to maybe take a little bit of it home with me. I'm gonna have fond memories of Barcelona for the rest of my life. The hormone will last about a week and a half. <laughs>